for youth development and also a very key partner to us at Active Youth, um, celebrating, you know, uh, you know, a height that they have reached, and we have we are adding up, you know, and joining in the celebration. Actually, uh, before I come to let you know, I just want to take us back uh, to one of the key issues that is our focus at Active Youth here. Um, one of the things that we we, we, we hold very um, with, with, with very high esteem is the SDG Goal 5, that is gender equality. And we all know that globally, and based on discussions that are here, women and girls globally um, go through a lot. Women and girls um, are suffering, women and girls are sidelines, there are so many biases um, that are actually limiting girls and women um, from reaching you know, their full potential and being the people they can be. Um, and in Ghana, generally, when you come, be, due to some of the reasons or the large spectrum of uh, you know causes surrounding this issue, it's much more deeper and worse here. And a group, you know, 20 years ago came together. Even though the focus, you know, 20 years ago was not basically uh, towards um, you know just specifically working for women and girls, um, they came together to champion an advocacy on HIV AIDS, just that, you know, champion advocacy, uh, trying to create more awareness on HIV AIDS, uh, preventive measures and stuff like that. And today, it has become a fully grown organization, fully grown organization, you know, uh, with over 20, uh, you know, 20, you know, understatement, 20 staff, with, uh, with over 20 staff, um, you know, cause so much impact from within the region, northern region and beyond. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to say that I have here in the studio today the founders of NORSAC to help us um, in celebrating the 20, day, uh, 20 years anniversary, reflect more on their journey and also explore some of the um, challenges that, um, you know, came along and also look at the future where we're going. I'm very excited about this session, um, so, but I know we are also very excited about it. I don't, take you you know on a very long uh, conversation i just want to go straight and go to them i have in the studio with me haji hafsa say sumani and al haji uh muhammad Awo, founders of norsa good evening and welcome to the show uh, good evening thank you so much hey. <laughs> <laughs> okay so um I, I i just made it you know al haji Awo, haji hafsa um Alaji, let me come to you. Alaji is the executive director at NORSAC. Okay. okay, so I think I've said what I wanted to say. But can you tell us more about the genesis of NORSAC, when you started, how you started? Well, mm. oh, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity. Uh, active youth, active Brahma. So this active hour. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, so let me first of all say thank you to you, the production team the staff and management of DEMO for the opportunity to share experience with the general public. I really find this particular opportunity quite exciting because of uh, the audience of this particular program. The target is uh, youth. And uh, I always say that I am youth. But uh, on this particular occasion, I have been there so not too far from the youth category and so any opportunity that connect me to this particular group is something that uh, i will welcome with all kinds of excitement so talking about mosaic is a journey that i'm so much proud about but also when any time i have an opportunity to discuss it I always uh, find it to be a difficult situation because of uh, some kind of what should be out there and what should not be out there. How will the story is and how will the challenges that we encountered in the journey? How will it motivate or demotivate people? It's been a long journey. And uh, I've always said that the journey started 
for me somewhere 1989. 1989? 1989. Has the North Star started in 2002? I said the journey for me. For you, okay. If you see North Star started, something actually led to that. It's actually, uh, like I said, it's a journey. You know, somewhere in 1989, there was this flood. Tamale had an experience where we I was not born. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we would have read. I think it was somewhere, I guess, 1989. And somewhere, I guess, September, September the international community uh, responded. They were providing support to uh, people who were affected. And I think the Aulidi Primary School was one of the areas where they had kept uh, refugees and or this place before. So I was around there, I saw what we across they were doing and uh, I was happy about the kind of service they were giving to people. And so I expressed interest to become a Red Cross member. That was how I get Red Cross. So I get Red Cross and then uh, within three years or so I had risen so fast in society because of interest, commitment to Red Cross activities and, and so it was just like was an opportunity to connect to my peers and to we connected so well and so we're discussing things. Is it, is it the Red Cross Red we Cross. have today? The Red Cross, yes that is the Red Cross but a lot has changed. Okay. A lot, a lot, yeah. So uh, we moved, we had branches uh, so I was actually from, I'm in the Sakasaka zone, we we'll call it the zone C. And initially, there was resistance from my family because of the Red Cross. My parents thought, uh, especially my father, my father thought it was like a Christian movement, so he didn't like that idea. He took one man called him, Mr. Jacob, Jacob Ndigo, to explain this to my father that no, Red Cross was not a, a Christian uh, movement, but it was just open to the general public and they were providing uh, uh, services to. Uh, to my kind. Uh, so my father accepted, I joined, and one thing leading to the other. Uh, so somewhere in the sixth year, I became a PhD leader, UNICEF, uh, uh, Action Aid, Irish Aid. Then they saw us young people with so much energy. And I think that was also sort the of very point that has and I connected at the summit 1995, so thereabout after that. So we connected and then a few of us were very active, active members of Red Cross. And at some point, I think she became an organizer. Uh, I was the organizer for the, the male side and then uh, she focused on the female uh, together with part one party. So, so, and, and actually, um, yes. the, the way you are saying that thing, oh, so interesting, but uh, I'm, I'm sure somebody may not. Is it like you join Red Cross as a group? No, yeah, that's individual. Uh, yes, I just joined Red Cross and at that time I didn't even know. I didn't is it like that the groups we have existing, like the other, was it just like a platform? Yes, okay. it was a platform, a platform for young people. And so we had adults and we had a, a, the younger ones were also in some form True that you got connected with UNICEF. Absolutely. Yes. So other UNICEF, opportunities. Absolutely. So UNICEF, they were working, supporting Red Cross to carry out some activities. So they identified some of us as young people and then they trained us as peer educators. Mm. And at that time, you know, HIV is, uh, there was so much concerns around um, um, young people getting infected okay and so the focus on how do we get young people to have information okay so peer education was one of the key tools that they decided to use so we're together providing a, um, a education to colleagues and uh, at some point they selected the two of us and, and they gave us some kind of special treatment because of our commitment because of what we we did at the time. And I think I have to, had to even go outside the country several times, except in New York and those days. Uh, but I gave up my best, my best to Red Cross. And the training that uh, they gave, I took those training seriously. And so it was surprising that um, when I went to some of my schools, uh, Tentama School, uh, Bath School, 
I was very instrumental in establishing Red Cross uh, branches there and becoming the president of uh, Red Cross. Uh, I think Batsko I established or called Batsko Anti-HIV is Club. Okay. And so it was at that time. And I was able to raise some resources and uh, submitted two proposals and they were all successful. So we had money, even our students, to do some activities. So somewhere in 2002, there were a number of questions after uh, let me let me, let me let me come, let me come to uh, yes. mommy. <laughs> you know, I've I've had an, a conversation with her yeah. in the past. So some of the you know the uh, Red Cross stories yeah. I've heard them. Um, I'm just happy that I'm hearing from you also today. Yeah. But mommy, let me come to you. Um, Alaji spoke about how you merged, you know, in relation to the advocacy on HIV AIDS. We, we really haven't got like. Um, so after that meeting, exactly when did the whole collaboration, <laughs> you know, okay, so, um, start? Just like uh, he mentioned, in fact, the connection did not just happen in a day, uh, because as you meet as young people, you look at who can I move with, you know, who shares my, my vision, and who thinks like me. You know, those things are all important. And I think um, um, I also joined the Ghana Red Cross in 1989. Okay. Uh, around the same time, I was in classes. And um, <laughs> I was in Sansaga Primary C. And then uh, I remember, I can't forget, <laughs> there's this man we call Ekomog. You know, uh, he's called Ibrahim. We used to call him Senior Isa or Brother Isa, right? Yeah. And so they were doing a lot of membership drive, and so I, I quickly joined. And then I went to Bishop Junior High School, and I continued to go for my meetings. For me, I never actually had my family resistant. Uh, of course, they were a bit more open. My mother uh, is a teacher, and the husband was also a teacher. So it's like, okay, so let's allow me. And so there were no much restrictions on my part. And I think um, after the peer education, and that is what I'll tell the young ladies out there, you know, the more you, 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 you are seen as somebody who can represent a group, even if there's a man who is um, more uh, active, they will prefer to pick the lady, I mean, as the one of the best. So um, along the line, uh, I was one of those uh, who represented uh, young people in Malawi. It was an HIV AIDS program in Malawi for about four weeks. And um, I think when I came, I shared the idea with some, some ideas of peer education and how we could mobilize more with a whole group of Red Cross. And I think that was where I co we connected more uh, and so it was like, oh, we can do this together. We can do this. We can do that, you know. And so when you find somebody, and I think that that was where I got more connected with our, okay. we can do this. And we started forming clubs in schools. Did you attend the same school? No, no. We, I went to Sakasaka Primary. He went to Nyansha. <laughs> Nyansha, who was your name? We've never, we've never been to, we've never, we've never been been to uh, school uh, together. So I went no. to... Uh, Sakasaka Primary, went to Bishop Junior High, and went to Ghana Senior High. We have always been on different things all so, together. So, but whilst in your schools, you uh, were collaborating to oh organize yes. programs. So, yes. uh, at some point, we were <laughs> close. So, one that one thing that engineered all of us, both of us, to to form the clubs. I was at Tamale College of Education. I mean, that school then, and he was at Tamale School. You know, so he would come to my school. And then we we'll move out. And you can imagine, let me just tell you the distance. You see Chobo to EP. Have you seen EP? EP uh, here. EP um, Junior High. Yeah, okay. We would walk. We we'll walk from Chobo to that. Today, would children walk like that? So that was how we were walking. And we could walk to so many schools within uh, a few weeks to form clubs. So we had around there. Uh, 35 clubs in, in Tamale, 
Yes, 35 clubs across the, the whole of Tamale. You, you and Alanji yeah, formed the two of us. 35 clubs. Yes, 35 <laughs> clubs. And we're moving from school to school doing peer education. And that was how come we got the Northern Schools East Action Clubs. That was a step up. And that was um, early 2000, uh, late 2000s, right? And then, um, so, um, though we are of same age, but um, I think they didn't want <laughs> to go to school early. So <laughs> I was a little uh, ahead in terms of the school. Mm. So I completed college, and he was at college. Uh, but we were still working together. See, I was in college and he was in senior high, and people could see us together all the time doing our peer education together. And and we could form. We after the thirty five schools that we formed, we were able to get the teachers committed to become mentors. And I I can't forget one lady called Dora, at. Uh, uh, Campbell Presby, Campbell Presby you know, and uh, one Miss Alassan at uh, first November. Those, those, I, I mean, I cannot get all of them again. But, but these were the schools we were working with, and we could do a lot of activities with them. Mm -hmm. We had commitment from from the students, and we also were so committed. We didn't have bicycles, we didn't have motorbikes. We were walking. Okay, yeah. that, that, that's, that's very interesting to note. Um, but I'm going to go okay. to, you know, the, the, main, the, main, the, the work you're currently doing. Uh, but I don't want us to go from the story because I'm also enjoying it so much. Uh, so before we move on, I want to find out, you know, from your journey, just this one you have shared and what is happening presently, what do you think uh, you would say that young people what do you think young people need to know? Well, I think young people need to have their eyes on the goal. You need to identify the goal and have your eyes on it. And with commitment, you will certainly attain the goal. This time, most of us uh, rush to pick up things without reflecting, thinking through those things. So it's just like you're on a journey that you're not sure of what will become part of it. So that is the major challenge. And so and when we do some of these things, we have difficulty in identifying people who can journey with us. Not that the people are not there. It's just that we are not conscious about that. Or we think we can do that all by ourselves. No. You need people who criticize you. You need those who give you hope. You need different actors in your journey. There were instances that uh, I, I felt there was no hope and that we should give up. And it came from family, it came from friends, and um, <laughs> from so, so many people. <laughs> and I remember at some point when I, I visited some of my friends and I realized that they had uh, this, uh, uh, there was this bed that came around that time. Oh, I'm not able to mention the, the type of bed, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they were constructed and then to just be on the, on the on ground, the floor, on the floor. Like uh, we had a funny meal for you at the time. You enter your friend's room, they, they have that mattress and all that, then they just uh, finish the room very well. And then you come to me nothing in my room. My, the money I get from uh, my allowance uh, as a teacher, then I push all that into the organization because you want to really make an impact. The commitment was there. So you visit some of your friends and you realize that they have all those things and you don't have. But there was one thing that kept me going. That's, look, I have passion for this. I'm used to working with people. I have been getting results. Why quit? So that kind of energy to keep on was there. So I think young people need to really identify where our passion is. And then we forget about individuals. What individuals uh, uh, do to us, mm. but we look at what their ideas 
can do for us. So sometimes we fail to discuss ideas of people and we we'll focus on discussing the people. And when you discuss people, you don't get their results. But you discuss their it, it, actions. It, 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 it's always uh, a major problem for Absolutely. young people. Yeah. I have moderated many um, youth sessions, and young people will say, always difficult identifying that person to move with. I'm going to come to, um, to ask that, but just to highlight, uh, with a passion, all the hurdles that comes, you can be able to go through them. Uh, you can walk from here to Sakasaka for the purpose of the program, just because you have passion for it. So let's identify that passion and work towards just just do because somebody's there. But mommy, um, in relation to that, yeah. how, uh, what, you know, you, you met at several times. What really made you, at what point did you realize that it's him that I can work with? <laughs> okay. How did you how did you get the part? How did you decide to partner? Um, <coughs> I think I want to add to what I will just mention that uh, these days we we don't do a lot of voluntary work. Okay. And um, I think for us, we're not even looking at establishing organization to get money. I don't think that was really <laughs> Yeah, that wasn't our motive. It's, it was like we we just wanted to reach out to people yeah. to have information. And our minds did not, so we didn't even, that was why we could w walk, actually. Because our minds was not on, tomorrow, today I'm getting this, I, I don't know, I, I, it never even crossed us. I remember <laughs> we would walk to Waterworks. Sometimes you, you walk down just through the streets, I mean. And then you get to, uh, because we could just move into the houses to EP, right? EP, yeah. So... And sometimes uh, I was doing my teaching practice, and then he would walk to meet me because I was already in on school in school uh, uh, doing the teaching practice. Then after that, we we'll just meet the students. So uh, it was just the uh, the passion and doing voluntary work without thinking, without looking at the monetary value first. And I think that was one thing that was driving us. Fortunately for us, we had a lot of people out there who admired the way we were doing things. Because we could, we could just use a small resource to do a bigger thing. And I remember our first grand program was held at um, Picona. And which year was that? 2000? Two, two thousand. Eh? Uh, and we did an HIV AIDS campaign with UNICEF. They didn't even support. It was like we, we did it thinking that they would support us. I, I don't know where we got the resources. I think we we're just doing some contributions. And you remember those times, the, the recorders, the, the, um, the sound system. Sound system. The sound system. It, oh, yeah. Those big recorders, we, we used that to record and we gave to UNICEF. Mm -hmm. I mean, they didn't even request for it. We did that and we had those recorded and they, they were so happy. They wanted to help us, but the assistance could not allow. But the individuals kept giving us that motivation. I remember oh, that man, we can never forget of him, <laughs> Mr. Andrews or say. He, he was in Accra, actually, but he just admired the way we were working. And um, Madam Grace, she was at, uh, also at UNICEF, yes, she's also retired now. And they kept on encouraging us and said, you people, you're doing well, continue. And so from there, we asked ourselves, should we just leave the Northern Schools Ace Action Class? And then we moved on to say, let's, let's widen the school. And then think of bringing in other issues. And around that time, Action Aid, people, some individuals in action, at Action Aid also developed that interest. At EBS also developed that interest. So they kept on engaging us one one off, you know, and um, our first, <laughs> our first 500 Ghana city, <laughs> you know, uh, came from um, uh, Ibis and uh, that's Oxfam. Yeah, Oxfam no, now. Oxfam. And um, the current country director, in fact, he's one of our in inspirers. He 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 just said, well, uh, yeah trying to see how you can just help them to organize that program. We did it at Catco. I don't know how we were able to print t-shirts. We did a lot of t-shirts at that time. And, and, and we had a very big occasion at uh, Catco, which for me was one of the things that also pushed us a little more. And so uh, in 2002, we started asking ourselves the question, 
let's let's just establish it formally and we started we were asking people how can we register the organization how can so it took us another long time mm. to be able to register the establishment and again it involved money so we we felt that we could fall on people and that is what what it was at some point individuals will disappoint you and a group of people will disappoint you you know your friends will disappoint you and so sometimes we would we would want to do something or we'll say well let's not rush let's move us so one thing that kept us moving was that we're encouraging each other i was uh, encouraging him he was also encouraging me at some point uh we had to move like i would go to school he would stay and do something then i come back then he goes to school so i think that was how we did it we didn't just both move to school at some point i i went to uds and he was the one keeping the forefront and then i came he also uh, I think you went first, right? <laughs> he yeah. went to Legon, came back, and then I went to UDS, and then came back, and then we, we were yeah. moving together. So I think we've just been there encouraging each other. We can do it, we can do it, and then. Uh, so in, in relation to um, and <laughs> your mommy went this um, around my question, um, why you decided to work with Elijah? Elijah well, you know, how how you saw how, what made you see he was a perfect partner? Uh, you know, d d when that decision. But uh, in responding to that, so I'd like you to um, <laughs> to help us look at you know growing up, like you said, you didn't really think, you, you know, you wanted to set up, the, the um, primary thing was just to make an impact, just contributing your quota. What is your background and how does it connect with what you do currently at North? I mean, what were your aspirations growing up, you know, what, what were some of the things that you wanted to do? Well, uh, hmm. growing up, actually, I wanted to be a doctor. I just thought that I would be a medical doctor. <laughs> And especially when I joined Red Cross, okay. and I was used to seeing blood, and so I just had in mind that uh, this is what I would do. And I was also academically uh, quite good, and so we selected a number of us to do science. Yeah, so you read science at yeah, so junior I was high from school? my junior high school. You know, when you were at that time, finally, uh, the school. We look at those who are performing and they were kind of you go and do yeah. science, yeah. Go and do science, and so they did that. Well, so I chose science and I uh, went to Thomas School. When I went, something like that happened. Then the, my name was missing in the science, uh, the list of science students. Then I went to a Greek student and I saw that uh, a Greek E. I was not happy, but that was the time we had chemistry the first was there, and they said, Okay, you can you know, still complete and then go into a nursing and become one. So they managed to convince me to stay. But um, I, I was not a happy person for the first one year because I wanted to be a science student. And, uh, and then uh, later on, when I completed, and there was this lady who tried hard to make me uh, go to the nursing school or just medical school. At, if at that time, I, I had even abandoned the idea of becoming a medical doctor. <laughs> that she wanted to push me into nursing. But then I just changed my mind. I wanted to be with people. So I realized that uh, it wasn't going to be the right area. Uh, you wanted me. to be, did, did, yeah, so did the journey somehow influence? Yeah, so my interaction with peers and all that influenced me. <laughs> so when they were sending me to, uh, when I finished and uh, NTC at that time it came out, I didn't like the idea again. So some of my colleagues, we all went to UDS freshers. Then I, I decided to go to Basco for a number of reasons. Some will be left here to be told later. Because you said but at the beginning all yes. already that yeah. you're always afraid what, to, what, <laughs> what, what should be out there and what yes. should it? Yeah, so I went to Basco and not knowing that it was going to be a point to mobilize resources and contribute in changing society. And I really have never regretted that I took the decision to go to the training college before pursuing my education. So I think I just, just at that particular point that uh, does uh, change my mind to be a social worker instead of being a, uh, a nurse or a So, so your decision to even go to um, BATCO had yeah. something to do with, you know, your genie, Absolutely. the career path you wanted. Absolutely. So you could make some, you know, small monies to support 
Yes. The late, oh. If you catch into my background, it will really, uh, uh, it, I, my, I, I mean, the, my home wasn't that good, you know. But the, the, the work that I was doing, I guess, engaging the young people in the peer education, they were giving us some monthly uh, uh, stipends so I could use that to also support uh, my, my course. So, uh, Mr. Andrews, he talked about uh, when he had that uh, took the decision to go to Pietro in Cali, he was so excited about it, and so he was so encouraged me to go. So I felt like those who were around me felt like going into the teaching uh, profession uh, was uh, the way to go at the time. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Mommy, your side. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, I, I think for me, I, I don't know why um, I, I read business in senior high school. <laughs> yeah. my, my passion was to, to be a radio mechanic, okay. a news reader. Yeah. And uh, I was always looking at the uh, Vitri Sedu as somebody. I, so I wanted to sit by the TV, I mean, on, on the TV, for people <laughs> to watch me. Um, unfortunately, uh, I didn't get arts to do. And um, I had business to do at the at the senior high school. And uh, after completing, um, I got to Tamaya College of Education. Again, it wasn't like I actually wanted to be a teacher, but I also asked myself, well, you just do your best wherever you find yourself, right? So that was how I was telling myself, okay, just 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 try to do the best thing where you are. And, and so because we were doing the peer education, it was an add-on. So for me, I felt that I was doing differently when I was teaching because I had already done a lot of peer education and so I could engage differently with my students. Uh, so that was, that was one thing that got me moving. Um, actually, Red Cross changed my way of doing things and the voluntary spirit was there, so I didn't actually care even during my teaching, I didn't care what salary I was getting. I I, I don't know. I, I can't even remember what I was using my money for. But when I say I can't even remember, because it was like you take it, you don't buy things for yourself. You just use it for some things. And most often it will be like let's write proposal. And we're using we were writing proposals, not typing on. We're just writing proposals by our hands. On paper. Yes. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't, we, were, we were packing the things and we saw the first proposal. Yeah. I, I don't know where we kept it, but in fact, we should have <laughs> brought it. <laughs> so we, we actually wrote proposals using uh, these A4 sheets. We write 10 pages. Mm. Eh? And then uh, we send it around. <laughs> I remember uh, we went to Uni 7. Oh, yo, your write-up is good, you know, those things. And then we'll go around, go around, go around. We'll not get anything. But it never actually demotivated us. So for me, um, I, I felt I could do more. And so my course, what I did, did not change my vision of, of impacting lives. Mm. And that, that is what I, I felt at that time. And I feel that wherever you find yourself, you'll be the best person. I, I just want to add that um, at some point, you feel like you are emerging leaders. And I think that some come naturally. Others, you have to exhibit that. And most often, anytime we had any gathering, they would just say, and we need two leaders or we need that, you know. And when they appoint you, you don't refuse. Yes. And I think that is what we have done for years. We never refused, we never resisted any position they gave us. So it was like, okay, so how can you lead this? And then I'll just, I'll just volunteer and do that. I wouldn't say give it to somebody. I wouldn't say, no, I can't do I never did that. And I don't think I will do that as well. So we were just imagined as leaders anyway. We found ourselves. You even go for a national program and they say you lead, you know. Most of them were more of appointment. They would just appoint you and then you and you so took all those yeah. and because we we're accepting it without fear, without looking because for me, I felt that it was opportunity. If they give you you take it. You don't you don't throw it back and you don't say I can't do it. 
you take it and challenge yourself to mm. do that. And I, I think love, that kept us moving. I love that you mentioned this because it's a very big problem today, yeah. especially for our young girls. Is it? And, and it, it's, it's even nice that it's coming from mom, yeah. Ajia. Um, that's, that's very interesting. Um, this is all the activist show here on the one I choose the film. Uh, I know at this point you, 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 I mean, you agree when Michelle says that when a child is growing, you don't ask them what do you want to be when you grow up. Mm. <laughs> you know, so let's think about mm. it. You know, I'm sure a lot of people are also already going through this. You know, uh, in also trying to get somewhere. So don't ask a child what do you want to be. And I like I like you said, you know, when you are good, they say go and do the science. Um, you know, things are changing. Yeah. Uh, we need to allow the children explore what they want to do. Because um, at the end, they will still go to where they wanted to go, no matter where you push them into. And that may be a waste of time uh, if they had started with exactly what they wanted to do yeah. at the beginning. Um, because of time, I can't prolong <laughs> the discussion. I had so many questions at the person at the personal <laughs> level. Um, I'm just reminding you, as uh, you know, let me give you the chance at 7:30, so you can call me. Take notes. My call line is 037 202 At exactly 7:30, I allow you to call me, ask questions. Uh, so they can respond to that. I'm also reminding you that we are live on Facebook on the Active Youth page. Just go to Facebook, type Active TV. You see us live there. Then if you're watching, you can also leave your comments there. We'll be reading them later. Um, you know, I, I want us to look at it. It's been beautiful. I, I love the entire story. Uh, but there can never be a journey without, you know, even though you shared small. Uh, can we look at some of the hurdles or, you know, um, strategy that could have threatened NOSAC sustainability? Mm -hmm. I think I can't say it. Okay. What was the lowest point? Oh. <laughs> well, uh, uh, thank you very much. I think they, we, they've always been up, up and down. Uh, the thing is, uh, the only thing I can say is that uh, we'll be stronger than the challenges. Mm, I love that. Um, one has to even managing that relationship to stay together. That's a major thing. You find two young people, opposite say, different background, and you have to stay together to pursue a common cause. The parents are there. Your parents are there, your family members, uh, and they will have the way they perceive you. Then they make some kind of guesses. This is what is happening, mm -hmm. and all those things. Mm -hmm. So, to be able to manage this particular thing and see yourself as just partners and nothing else, for me, was a major, major thing that we had to overcome. People will provide advice. There were instances some will even call and say, look, the way people are, if you are able to do this together, if you are a couple, if you are doing I mean, all <laughs> of these things that I, I really, some I don't want to get go. But there were people who will call you to advise that because I was not uh, married, uh, she was also, uh, I mean, we were both young, though she got married uh, early at some point. Uh, but what kept us going was that, uh, look, we have something to do. We are working, and that is that is it. I just uh, sometimes there were the instances that there will be in my uh, cubicle or just uh, just working on a proposal. But I think uh, sometimes I think there was okay. there were some instances around 11 p.m. So I guess in the room two people working. I bet you this our generation it is like these people. Mm -hmm. 10 p.m. two people working today and tomorrow they will begin to think yeah. about something. That was, in fact, we were fortunate enough. It, it never crossed our mind. It was, how can we achieve our goal? So that particular thing was a major one. The second one was uh, how the decision we took to manage our first grant. When we got the money, I think it was 200 Ghana City. But that was just like something that said, oh, you people, you know how to train. We want to send you to oh, one community around Kasi Yile Kunguri to do training. 
for students. And so we'll give you 1.5 million at that time, old Ghana city. And then another 500,000 for, for your transport. So in all, that was 2 million, old Ghana city. The decision we took down that time really helped us. And that is, I can see, is, is largely the reason why we are here today. We said, instead of spending that money, so we're going to use part of it to buy a computer. OK. Then Benjamin. we'll get a bench of three hands with <laughs> or two. Then we'll get the furniture. Mm -hmm. Then we're looking for a place and said, OK, look, my room can still be used as our office. But let's get a chair and then the computer so that we'll be able to, to type. It was a major decision. And then our first proposal that we was supported financially again was uh, basic needs. So basic needs. Basic yeah. needs. Yeah. And so basic needs, I always say, uh, when people see Peter and I, and they just think that yeah, we connected yesterday, you no. Know, Peter, we didn't know each other, but he bought into our thinking, our idea, and he supported us with some amount of money. And that was a turning point of our, our journey. Uh, so, when people realize that uh, we're able to manage 20 million, uh, old Ghana city. And, uh, we, 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 <laughs> so when I mention this figure, we, we don't get scared. 20 million, old Ghana city. Then they began to develop confidence in us. And that was uh, how even the 500 from the EBs uh, also came in. And then the Action Aid and others uh, then, uh, then they followed. Just start coming. So the challenge is that you do not have the system. We can give you resources oh we like your ideas you do you are doing great uh, uh, things but there is some kind of limit we, we can go so now thinking back i said that uh, could we have done things differently if they hadn't pushed us to to meet the legal requirement because they wanted to help we wanted to just have like a natural kind of group not legally registered by just doing our own things. That was what we're thinking. But those who were standing, watching, they said, no, 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 no. If you went on that tangent, you were not going to, to make it. And so they advised against that. And one of the things that really influenced us to register somewhere between 2003, 2004, when we incorporated it, but we had to change our position, say, look, we will make it formal. You needed that to open the bank accounts. You needed that to, to be respected by the international organizations and also to establish some kind of relationship with them. So these were some challenges that uh, we had to go through. One other challenge uh, had to do with acceptance. There was that kind of difficulty in accepting me as a true uh, advocate of women. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. When we took a position, especially in 2003, and say we wanted to be a gender focused organization, 2003, it wasn't a popular decision. And we didn't have many organizations pushing that agenda. And so gender was highly resisted at the time. It was seen to be um, for deviance and people who were coming to change the status quo. And so it was highly resisted. So even within the civil society space, there was that kind of strong resistance accepting a male as a gender activist. And 2004 to 2008, I had to struggle with this seriously. And at some point it was just said, two of us, myself and one Frank, Frank Buja, Frank Buja, just to uh, working on domestic violence, uh, bill, affirmative, affirmative action. action, all those things. So I have, I'm happy I have been part of the domestic violence bill from the beginning. Okay. Making inputs and then uh, so at some point I say, and the two of you, why are you also uh, <laughs> part of this and uh, the energy in you is so high and all that. But Frank and I, we never went we never went back. So the challenge of being accepted for me, should we change? Yeah. 
should focus at all? Should I, should, yes, should I even abandon the, the leadership role? You understand? So. And for me, if you say whether we have had impact, at least getting females to contest for school professional position is one thing that I'm very proud of. Changing that because in yes. the past it had only because been. Because now we have all the uh, chas, that is the chas, um, in, in the northern parts using um, a similar structure. They used to have different, different structures. And for me, this is a very uh, impactful one, I feel, that they are owning the process. It's not an easy thing because you're also doing it with communities. You know, different communities, a lot of people will challenge it. I went to my school, my former school recently, and uh, the mentor told me that, look, they are still, people are still not accepted that a female can lead this school. And I said, don't worry, it's gradual. Uh, it's, it's rather unfortunate that my school came ahead of that because <laughs> they didn't have a female <laughs> And you know, previously we have, we have had schools having females. Japan has had successive girls coming as prophets, you know. Uh, it's just that, you know, Tabasco is big, and so that one became a more bigger one. And we, we now have a lot of the young girls being school prophet or assistant school prophet. So the structure is now something that gives the opportunity for young girls to contest for leadership positions and also participate. And for me, that is one thing I feel is a big change, because this is an institutional change, and, and I feel proud of that. In 2019, when I was in 2020, I was going for SRC president of a campus. One advice somebody gave me was speak to NOSAC. I, I, I didn't know NOSAC then. So that shows that people also recognize the work here. And recently, I think the minister designate for gender yeah. uh, made a comment NOSAC groomed me. Yeah. You know, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> Happy to be part of this uh, yes. celebration. So uh, you cannot call me the call line is there. Three seven two zero two three two six one zero three seven two zero two three two six one zero three seven two zero two three two six one. Hello. Hello. You know the gender minister when she Hello. was. Hello. Uh, Hello. Hello. Yeah, please. Your name and origin as well. Your name is Mubarak from Goma. Mubarak, welcome to the show. What do you have for us? Good evening to you, Mama, and good evening to the distinguished uh, panelists, um, Mr. Awell and then um, Haji Hassan. They are so um, have really inspired us, and then um, as young people, we need to learn a lot from this story and then um, take up challenges like um, we have mentioned and then um, certainly we would all work together and make this world a better place. So on this note, I would want to congratulate NOSAC for attending 20 years, 20 years of transformational changes in the lives of so many people. I am equally a beneficiary of um, NOSAC. Like I said, yes, because I participated in NOGA 1 and then um, NOGA 2 and then um, I would I would wish that North will continue to extend its tentacles to more districts in the um, region and the country at home so that um, together we can all benefit from um, this initiative. Thank you once again for the opportunity. Thank you so much, Mubarak. Sir, um, you can also call the call and it's still zero three seven two zero two three two six one zero three seven two zero two three two six one. Uh, yeah, we also live on Facebook. You can leave your comments there as well. Alaji, you were saying something. Yeah, I was just saying that uh, when the current uh, minister for uh, the uh, the gender minister, basically, um, was appointed deputy CEO of uh, NG. Uh -huh. In fact, she called and said, "Please, I want to extend an invitation to you to come and then uh, visit my office. You've been part of my journey." And I can't tell my story without mentioning Nosa. Wow. That was a um, um, fulfilling moment. And uh, I actually I was happy that uh, people are appreciating the kind of contributions that uh, we are making to society. I remember uh, the whole of Northern region at that time, we had Northeast Savannah and all the modern region. We had just four 
elected women. Four elected women to the assembly. Yes. That is uh, if you look at it from 1998 to 2002. Yes, four. 1998 to so, 2002? Yes. When we launched this campaign, the challenge that we're going to uh, cause a change. And after the 2002, 2005 election, we had 38 women elected to serve in the assembly. Wow. And we had over 150% increase in terms of appointment into the assembly in the north in the yeah. north yeah in the north of the region. so that contribution really made NOSAC a household name when it comes to gender issues for women representation so you find people in the academia uh, and then also consultants who were doing research into this both local and then foreign they said okay well Anytime they visited and then they wanted to do things of this nature, they referred them to NOSAC. So they, they, those people then became like uh, advocates of NOSAC. Mm -hmm. I went to this event and this was what I saw. So it really kept us uh, in a very good uh, position. Mm -hmm. So please, when we do good things, people talk for us. And so sometimes you will not have the energy to do so much. But the little that you do, if you do it with passion, and people appreciate that, they will become ambassadors yeah. of your work. And when you're not even there again, you yes. take it from there. Thank, Thank you so much. Uh, my call line is still 37 3261 37-202-3261. If you have questions for Hajia and Alaji, call us through 37 202 If we were to go back in time, you know, and you have to rebuild NOSAC, what would you change in terms of your approach? Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, what would I change? I, I, I feel... Uh, we have a particular leadership structure as like mine, as as organization. We live a family life. I don't know when you enter next work. I don't know how you feel, but um, people who just come to Norsak uh, see a family. We are from different areas. Yeah, family, but when you can come easily. to just join, you just uh, get yourself acquainted with the environment and move on. And I think uh, if I were to change Norsak. I'm still looking at something. I, I wish we could get a lot of voluntary, voluntary work around us. Um, I, I would wish that we do a lot more um, engagement around how to do voluntary work or voluntary uh, by the youth, mm, you know, okay. because uh, that is missing. That is how NOSAC started, you know, because the passion of doing voluntary work. And for me, I know that it's not a, an easy thing, but that is one that can move people and, and let them appreciate what they are doing. And, and that is what I feel that I, it's, it's not, NOSAC is not like, I, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know how to say it, but <laughs> I, I feel that for now, we are, we are still doing well, but we need to still, still improve on other things. Okay, I, 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 you want to say something? Yes, I think uh, uh, for now, if you look at our current strategic document, we are looking now at working with networks. It's a movement for active citizenship. How do we get uh, the youth, especially, to connect and lead when it comes to issues affecting them? What I think perhaps not something needs to change at this particular point is to take the space that is out there. The space there we can for us to feel, but we appear slow in getting to that particular point. We should be a top and practice organization in the country when it comes to women and youth. The integration is quite good, but how we communicate that and how we justify why we are integrating issues of women and youth is something that focus for the next 20 years. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Interesting. We wish you all the best, and we are always there. 
uh, to, to, to always um, support, you know. Um, so I saw the activity show here on Domino Chief of Civil Firm. Um, we're currently joining, you know, NORSAC to celebrate their 20 years by bringing them here to help share their story, uh, to inspire us, you know, so that as young people who are looking forward um, to be like them, and of course, some of you think you want to be more than them, and I think that's their wish to They love us so much, um, to learn from their journey uh, so that we can be able to, you know, know how to actually have our own genies as well. So um, we're still on. This is the active show. I, I want you to call in, ask your questions uh, so they can respond to us. Uh, we have shared so much already. So if you have any questions based on what they have shared already, you can call me through 037-202-3261. 37 and well so i'll just add that um as founders it's not like we want to live in nosa forever that is one one other thing we want people to know that we'll transition and make others leave lead the organization and uh, it may be soon it may take a while but we are not actually going to be in NOSA forever and and that is something we are doing <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um we we have plans to exit and uh, uh, we would exit gradually at, at some point and that is why we are growing i think when you come to our office you can see that people are emerging as leaders people can lead and uh, it doesn't mean that whoever is here is with us is going to be the, the executive director or whatever but uh, it is a plan for us and just as i will mentioned we want to see NOSA up there somewhere you know so it can be it, it can be in west africa it can be in whatever and uh, that is one thought around around us i don't know what our next strategy document will speak but Currently, if you look at the current strategy document, uh, we do a lot of advocacy within the, the, the West Africa sub-region. And so it's, it's one of the things that we are looking up to. Um, he mentioned getting us closer to the academia. And I think that as an advocacy uh, leading organization, you need to look at how you are using emerging issues from researchers and all that and that is how we can connect more we may have other uh, other new things coming up like having leadership <laughs> leadership institutes and all that these are all bigger thoughts that uh, you can see us submerging into other many other things but um, currently we, we are focusing on building the use to own things within themselves and that is why we are supporting this movement of youth that we have to ensure that they are also championing their own issues and are able to advocate. And I think uh, maybe I will want to add a little more. Yeah, well the future is unknown and that is yeah. really the part of the future. But if you are able to shape your future yeah. and you will be able to tell or make some right guesses. I, there are a number of things that I personally plan to do, and I don't think um, I should be around to see most of celebrities uh, Silver Jubilee. Maybe I could be a guest or something else. Uh, okay. And uh, I believe there are some other ways that I can contribute to the development of you. I, I'm still exploring a number of them. Some I still want to keep them to my chest. And then uh, at the right time, people will know that. Uh, but what is important is uh, developing succession plan, looking at how to transition, and also to make sure that uh, um, things are well structured. We need to build a resilient organization, and that is currently what I'm doing, just to make sure that uh, it is not just led by an individual, but we have leaders 
at all levels, people leading downwards, upwards, and the middle, and not to just have the uh, uh, upward kind of leadership. So we are testing leadership models. We are looking at also, we're always in the learning journey. And uh, that is the interesting part of this work. I've never done same things for two years. No, I've never. And any time it appears as if I'm doing same things on annual basis, then it means that my stay in Ozark is long overdue. I can't be doing same thing continuously for more than two years, no. So for example, like in our journey, this year, we used not to be at the forefront of managing USCID grant. That is a new thing in my journey now. USCID now managing some kind of portfolio, giving grants to other organizations. That's another learning. It started 2019-2020. So that is, there's always need to do something different. And I just pray and hope that I don't get myself in a situation where I will be doing same thing on an all basis. Interesting, interesting. Um, so you are head the the part to do to this year. Absolutely. Uh, mm -hmm. support other smaller yeah. um, organizations to yeah. all of that really are Well, um, let me just because you're so productive, help. <laughs> I think, um, hmm. uh, I think one of the issues that we had to battle with with religious leaders was when uh, in 2019 uh, we were silent, or I would just say we were silent. But uh, the issue of uh, the, the the national guidelines for reproductive health, or we we'll call it comprehensive sexuality education, when it came up, I think NOSA was one of the organizations in the northern region that was called to ask questions of what was our position, and. And in fact, this was a very difficult and dicey issue for us because you wouldn't say that you are not part of the whole uh, journey of uh, developing that guideline. And you wouldn't also say that uh, the issues they are talking about is not true. So that, that, that was one of the aligning NORSAC work on sexual reproductive health to the LGBTQ um, conversation. And for me, that was something that we had to answer at every corner we found ourselves. And it's still a challenge. We are still battling. It's still another issue that people will still not open their minds, but will still ask those questions of, is this, is this what you mean? And I think along the line, um, it, it's not been easy when people find themselves um, managing um, resources and human beings, you know, when we say resources in terms of uh, money. And um, at some point, you need to ask yourself whether you should still keep staff. And so this, this has been some of the challenges we, we have had. Uh, a few ones have been the short-term projects that we have had as organization. Uh, fortunately, we have been able to get a few ones that are also on the on I mean, a long term project. So um, again, the perception out there around some of the programs we do um, is also another hurdle. But uh, as, aside the sexual reproductive health, I think it's been it's been a smooth one for us somehow. 
Yeah. Okay, you know, Raman, let's also add the, the challenges, uh, you know, the context where we find ourselves, like the North. So, if we're set up in nation's capital, by now, most of the name will be all over. So, to be from the North and to take national space, you need to really work hard, work hard, and even harder. Always, um, you know, very admirable. That's very admirable. Um, we, we, we have, you know, like we, we've spoken so much, and yes, of course, I'm still inviting um, you listening to ask questions or you have suggestions for NORSAC. You can also give that because we have some few minutes, like less than 10 minutes to end the show. Uh, but before we go, uh, I want us to, we've, we've spoken about the, you know, I think we looked at um, challenges at the beginning, you know, starting um, things that could make it, you, you know, not sustainable. No. But along the journey, you know, 20 years is not small. What, what were some of the hurdles that also came along? You know, especially here, tradition, religion, trying to fight for women, reproductive health rights. Mm. Mm. <laughs> well, um, let me guess, because you mentioned reproductive health. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think, um, hmm. uh, I think one of the issues that we had to battle with with religious leaders was when, uh, in 2019, uh, we were silent, or I would just say we were silent, but uh, the issue of uh, the, the, the national guidelines for reproductive health, or we we'll call it comprehensive sexuality education, when it came up, I think NOSA was one of the organizations in the northern region that was called to ask questions of what was our position. And, and in fact, this was a very difficult and dicey issue for us because you wouldn't say that you are not part of the whole uh, journey of uh, developing that guideline. And you wouldn't also say that uh, the issues they are talking about is not true. So that, that, that was one of the aligning NORSAC work on sexual reproductive health to the LGBTQ um, conversation. And for me, that was something that we had to answer at every corner we found ourselves. And it's still a challenge. We are still battling. It's still another issue that people will still not open their minds, but will still ask those questions of, is this, is this what you mean? And I think along the line, um, it, it's not been easy when people find themselves um, managing uh, resources and human beings, you know, when we say resources in terms of uh, money. And um, at some point, you need to ask yourself whether you should still keep staff. And so this, this has been some of the challenges we, we have had. Uh, a few ones have been the short-term projects that we have had as organization. Uh, fortunately, we have been able to get a few ones that are also on the on, I mean, uh, long-term projects. So um, again, the perception out there around some of the programs we do um, is also another hurdle. But uh, as, aside the sexual reproductive health, I think it's been it's been a smooth one for us somehow. Yeah. Okay, you know, let's also add the challenges, uh, you know, the context where we find ourselves, like the North. So, if we're set up in nation's capital, by now, most of the will be all over. So, to be from the North and to take national space, you need to yeah. really work hard, work hard, and even harder you need to really uh, push to be able to get that space. So uh, that imbalance is there. So if you are conscious about it and you want to really make, get space at the national level, then you really need to, uh, to work at it. And then also if you look at uh, the funding, the erratic nature of uh, uh, funding, uh, fortunately in our side we've been able to position ourselves to uh, to money the challenge, but of course it remains uh, uh, our biggest uh, challenge 
of course, uh, Ghana attained the major income status, and also at some point political leadership talking about Ghana beyond it, and then it was welcome globally. It was actually um, misunderstood by many people, and it affected uh, the funding architecture of uh, civil society, and so that has also been a major challenge. And also the area that we are focusing on, we are always in conflict with religion and tradition. Because if you are saying that um, try and redistribute rules to <laughs> allow sexes appreciate whatever is going on, we are talk talking about redistribution. We are talking about recognition, recognizing that someone is overbearing. We are really not interested who is overbearing here. You yourself do the assessment and come out. If the, the, the male child is overbearing, do something about it and free him some space. If the other way around, free that female. Then, so if you're talking about balancing this redistribution, are we taking the position? So if for now the analysis point to the fact that the female is overbearing and we're talking about reducing and redistributing the, the work, then I think we are just being fair to you and fair to society. So we are always in that kind of conflict with culture, our traditional authority, then the religious authority. One example of this what I have said, uh, gave about uh, the reproductive health education. I always tell people, and that reproductive health education will come back. You see, what we need to do is that what kind of reproductive health education do we want to have as Ghanaians and as people of the North? We need to have that. It must be driven by our context. It must be age-sensitive, age-appropriate. And if we do not do that, there will, some people will push it on us because its relevance cannot be underscored. So these are some of the challenges that uh, I think we need to mm. really look at. Interesting. Like you say, it's coming back. I think Nozak brought it back already yeah. uh, with the Bring Back Arich uh, yeah. forum we had the last yeah. time. Uh, Interesting. We have to look at our context and then uh, reconsider things before bringing back uh, comprehensive sexuality education because it's very, very important. Uh, someone says, I agree with you that, okay, I think he's commenting on, um, I agree with you that no parent should force their children into spaces they do not want to be. Every growing child has his or her own ideas about the future and they would need their parents' guidance and counseling. Thank you. That's from Richmond on Facebook. Um, we have, unfortunately, you know, we're going to talk, you know, the whole night, but uh, an hour, 30 minutes is almost over. Mm -hmm. uh, we have some few minutes and left. People have complained that they are not getting the line through. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the call, the phone, uh, I'm moving to support today, that it, it was, there was a challenge with that. Mm -hmm. But since I was able to answer the first call, I was sure that um, it's fine. But if you still try and then you can reach me now, um, the call is 037-202-3261, 037-202-3261. For the four, past four weeks, they've been challenged um, with the telephone. That's why you can also text also, because uh, for now we're going to be having um, our last messages from them. Uh, you know, one reason we wrote is to help you know, cel celebrate you, get to know more about you, but also to inspire young people out there. Um, if you're going to leave, you know, w what last advice? You, you, have, you, have, you, you are here, you know, the current um, trend, you, you're seeing how you're doing as things as young people. You know, you have done your things in the past, comparing what are some of the advice or some of the suggestions, some recommendations you have for young people. Listen. So, for me, I would just say that, um, As young people, you need to still challenge yourself. Uh, you need to have your vision, what you really want to. And you need to move there by yourself. And uh, as young ladies, you even face the challenges more. You need to tell yourself that I will get there. We need to reduce the perceptions out there. 
because if you focus on perceptions, you, your group would slow down. If you know that what you are doing is the right thing, go on with it. And don't let people's comments, people's statements drive you back. And for me, that is one way that I want to give out there. Know your vision, then, um, you know, let people's perceptions and then their yeah. own comments bring you back. Alaji. Yeah, okay. Maybe my, uh, the, the advice I will give to the general public, especially the youth, is that they should resist conclusions that there is a single path to success. Because there is always a path to success that we must follow. No. It's not a straightforward thing. People will have to try things. They will try things and eventually succeed. Their paths will certainly be different from those who would try once and make it. The paths will always be different. But what is important is being able to tell what is on the other side between you now and the vision. The path can be different, but you need to just be able to tell what exactly you want to have at the end. That is important. If we have it, then we are good to go. The, if I think back, the things I did as a youth and also youth, like youth and hobby, I'm not able to do those things today. I'm not able. So we need people to fill those gaps. And that's why I would say that we need many more youth led organizations, youth movement to take that space. We need that. And there's so much space to contain all of us. People think that, oh, so many organizations, where are they going to be getting resources from? No. We have resources, and the resources we have would be able to contain all organizations, all ideas in our society. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, there's no one uh, way to success. Yeah, your experience is definitely different from someone else. So. Um, how you will go is definitely different from how somebody go. I don't think it has to be the same. That's from Alaji. Thank you so much. Uh, I just think we should have a vision. Uh, very, very important. If you know what you want, um, what people say, people's perception about you, it will not matter. What will matter is, you know, the goal, you know, that thing that you're looking at and you keep moving until you get there. Thank you so much. It's been very, very interesting. I uh, personally learned so much. I just want to take us back. Um, by you know bringing back some of the things that I picked from the session, you know, uh, one thing a lot of people picked, but um, I, I choose because of you know what I have seen happening, you know, the ones that are very, very common among young people that I want to remind you about when they appoint you, take it, um, don't say no, you don't know uh, what that you know opportunity can bring you. Haji has. Text, uh, testify to that fact and especially the young girls it's common among young people but very common among young girls that people think um, it's a very big challenge when it comes to giving women um, an opportunity because when you call them they don't take I think I have a call hello 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 Okay, um, thank you. Yeah, so when I appoint you, accept it, and then, um, hello? Hello? Yeah, please, your name is Rachel Nesma. Good evening, your name is Rachel Nesma. Hamsao. Shishao, okay, Hamsao, you're welcome to the show. Um, quickly, because it's time, almost time. Oh, I want to use this opportunity to celebrate a hero and a hero and tell them that we thank them and appreciate them for always projecting the fact that girls are not objects of pity but partners in development and general development skills. Mr. Awal and Hadia Hafsa, you have done so much for the girl child and women as well. And I'm a living testimony. I couldn't go without sharing uh, my words and also to register my pleasure. 
in everything that they have done. Camille. They have always given us the strength to pull through the deed. And I wish we will tread on their path and maybe be more than what they are to be, more than what they are ashamed to be. So if they are listening, thank them so, so much. And we appreciate them in everything they have done. They are our heroes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hamsa. This is not a question, so we don't need any reply. Thank you so much. Um, we're still celebrating with you. Um, congratulations for 20 years of impact and service, NOSAC. Uh, so, yeah, I'm still ending. Um, accept opportunities when they come. Um, I'm going to support. And young people have to develop that spirit of volunteerism. I think the last time in the interview with Adja mentioned uh, the system, how NGOs have started, you know, always trying to give money. Uh, when there is no need for that, you know, uh, we have pampered the young people too much that they are used to it. So if you want to change, it's difficult. It's not only young, even communities. We are used to getting, we are used to taking. So when you are told that at this point, no, we can't give, you think there is, is there, you don't want to give them. So they try to resist. So that approach, um, I think we all made a mistake at the beginning. And it's, it's good that we are, uh, you know, we identify it and then try to work around that so that we go back to um, how it used to be. And I think that's when we can get authenticity and then real impacts. You people will genuinely um, contribute. So um, I think this is where the program is going to end. It was very, very exciting. Thank you so much, Alaji and Hajia, uh, for making the time to come. They are the founders of NORSAC. You know, I like as well. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Uh, congratulations once again for celebrating 20 years of impact and service. And to you, thank you so much for making time with us. This